distribution and leadership on the field. It's a top 15 matchup here in Chapel Hill when we come back. We're going to talk a lot about the Pittsburgh offense, but defensively in goal, Lazzarini tied for the program lead and wins for her career with 19. One more to have sole possession first place. She's going to need to be big here for Pitt as they look to get the win here in Chapel Hill. And for Anton Dorrance and his team, two changes. Libby Moore, we talked about in the open, getting the start for Maggie Pierce, who picked up the red card on the road at Virginia Tech last game. And up top in place of Izzy Cox, it is Emily Murphy on the right wing. Alongside Brianna Pinto, I'm Kyle Straub, ready to get underway here at Dorrance Field. And what we talked about is essentially, even though you're in the middle of the year, a must win for the Tar Heels and for Pitt, a game where really you have an opportunity to show everybody, hey, you're for real. You're looking to compete not just for regular season wins, but for postseason dominance as well. Pittsburgh Panthers are coming in with energy and confidence that the program has never seen before. And it, frankly, it's exciting because uh, they're making records and they're coming to play a team like North Carolina and looking for the win tonight. For T North Carolina Tar Heels, they need to make sure they're locked down defensively, especially in the second half, and also push for goals early if they can. The Tar Heels need to secure this win as they only have six games remaining in the season. Yeah, it's interesting for North Carolina when we talked with Anson Dorrance prior to this one. He said, we've dominated every game we've played. That includes the three games we've lost. And you, you just hit on they need to get goals early. That doesn't seem to be an issue for this team. It's not giving up goals late is really where they've been hurt. The absence of Macy Bell and Kaylee Herr has definitely hurt them, but it allows experience for Julia Dorsey and Corey Hansen to step up in the ways that they need. They're going to have to lead from behind, make sure that they're compact defensively, and organize the team to make sure they shut out the game and, and are aggressive defensively for the 40, entire 90 minutes. 44th season at the helm of the North Carolina women's soccer program for Anson Dorrance. And you saw a shot there of Macy Bell on the bench, a girl that he says has got potential to be the center back on the U.S. national team. She thinks that she is that good suffered an injury early this season out for the year and they have tried to fill that hole but he also said you know that's the one spot that we're not really that deep on either it stinks of when you lose two players that play the same position but in terms of depth that's when you need your players that can understand a formation and a system and adapt quickly and i think julia dorsey has done a really great job stepping in from the right back position and Pairing nicely with Tori Hansen, Julia Dorsey provides the speed that you need to close down defenders that get in behind, while Tori Hansen provides the great passing ability and the leadership from behind as well. I'm sure he's seen everything over his 44 years, but there really wasn't any panic from Hansen when talking about it. Here's Sam Meza, nice ball into the box. Patterson gonna cross it, hit the side of the net. Carolina putting some pressure on them early here. Seven goals this season for Avery Patterson. Nice effort to square it across the box, looking for the trailing runner in Emily Murphy. 29 goals on the season for North Carolina, just under two and a half per game that they average. Rare that they go against a team that averages more, but Pitt second in the country at 3.3 goals per game. Ball hit around a couple of times. Patterson not able to get to it. Lazzarini just getting there before. Actually, that was Emily Colton. Senior out of Nazareth, Pennsylvania. Nice little flip there from Murphy. Here's Meza from the near side. Back out wide for Murphy. Looking for Patterson. She keeps it alive. Great save. Point blank range. Lazzarini off the header. 
Allie Sentnor, the freshman, nearly getting her fourth goal of the season. Fantastic effort from Emily Murphy to cross it over across the box, and Avery Patterson redirects it across the frame of the goal so that Allie Sentnor could head it on frame. But a great save from Lazzarini. Twelve different goal scorers this season for the Tar Heels. Hanson told us putting Murphy in there, trying to figure out the best combination to have up top, and he called her their best finisher in terms of picking up the assist, setting other players up when they get down into that attacking third. Emily Murphy's final passing ability is really key in the North Carolina's attack because she plays it with the right weight and texture, allowing it to go directly into the stride of her teammate. If you're on that pit team five minutes into this game, you're a player that is on a team that scored 40 goals this season. You're used to being on the offensive side of things, yet you haven't gotten past midfield. What's going through your mind right now? The first five minutes are a nice time to establish what you're going to be in the first half. And for Pitt, they, they've been on the opposite end of North Carolina, who's been fairly direct throughout the first five minutes. And to counteract that, you want to play in behind Carolina and see if you can stretch them because Pitt has pacey forwards who are capable of going 1v1 on the dribble and maybe they can create some great opportunities for themselves in their attacking third. Pitt led by Coach Waldrum, although that's a different one than I'm talking about. Randy Waldrum in his fifth season, the head coach, his son Ben Waldrum filling in for this game as his dad is over with the Nigerian national team coaching them. We were discussing earlier what a special moment it must be to share share the coaching ability with your, your father and learn from him every day. He, he tabbed his father as the best coach in the NCAA, and the season the Pitt Panthers have had so far is proving just that. I think he definitely has an argument there. I would also say maybe a little bit of bias, but you can't blame him at all. <laughs> Here's Sentinel for the Tar Heels. 1v1, nice defensive play there by Pitt. It'll be a corner for the Tar Heels, but a great job tracking back by Ashley Moon. Great effort from Avery pa Patterson to help it on, and Ali Sentinel tries to get into the 50-50, but earns a corner kick. Sentinel, last year's number one overall recruit, didn't play a single ga a game for the Tar Heels after suffering a knee injury in the preseason. Second corner for the Tar Heels. This one trying to find Murphy. Ball still loose. And Pitt will be able to get it out of the 18. Seventh all-time meeting between these two. North Carolina has never lost to Pitt. 6-0 in the history. Picked up a 1-0 win last year at Pitt. It's been a few years, though, since they played here in Chapel Hill. you got to go back to 2018. Tar Heels picking up a 3-0 win in that one. This is a different Pitt program, though, from those past meetings. Third year in a row, Brianna, that they have found themselves ranked in the top 25, and it seems like things have just been building over the last couple of years under Randy Waldrum that are kind of culminating in what this season has become. 11 wins already tying a program record. I think with time, coaches know what they want, and then they're able to recruit the players that fit the system that they're trying to build. And they've done ju just that with just the kind of players that connect well with each other, uh, fight for 50-50 balls, and also create opportunities out of nothing in the attacking third. And I think we've seen a lot of that, especially on set pieces for Pitt Panthers this year. Have you ever been on a team where an assistant has to fill in as the head coach for a game? Now that I'm thinking about it, no. I think no? during my time in college, Anson was at every game, I believe. Him and Damon uh, led the ship, and it was a really special time. Do you think as a player for Pitt that it really makes much of a difference when you're on the field? I know when you're at the hotel and, and stuff like that, maybe schedules are a little bit different from person to person, but... In terms of the 90 minutes that you play on the field, will it really impact them? I think 
think you're missing a, the head coaching presence, but uh, Ben Waldrum is perfectly capable of stepping up. But he knows the system inside out. He's able to collaborate with his father, and I think what they're building here is really special. Um, but as a player, you want to remain consistent in your preparation, and you can't be influenced by what's going on in the outside because their objective today is to come to Dorrance Field and get a win. Meza wins this ball in the midfield for the Tar Heels. Patterson with some room, setting her out wide. She plays it to her, looking to come to the near post, and Colton just couldn't connect on the run. Great buildup, though, from Carolina. As Ashley Moon down for Pitt, we saw her make the really nice play tracking back on Sentinel earlier. Looks to be in a good bit of pain here, though. Down in front of the Carolina bench, back near midfield. I just hope she's okay. She's a key player for Pitt, and she's done a fantastic job this season. Thirteenth game that Moon has played in this season. Over 500 minutes, but the way she goes off, they're going to have to have a sub come in. What's concerning is the fact that it may have been a non-contact injury. Hope to see her check back in in the second half. Healy Davidson, the grad transfer from Oklahoma, comes in for her. Meza called her name a few times already. She's got four assists on the season. That paces the North Carolina offense. We also highlighted Libby Moore in, in that last moment. You saw the way she doubles back and helps her back line. Her, again, her work rate is second to none. She's able to cover the back four, and she does it with grace and passion and grit. So 23 there for Pitt. Theory trying to put some pressure on Carolina. Nice ball ahead. Here's Patterson for the Eels. Patterson shot just going to go wide. Lazzarini made the decision to come out and challenge her, and it looks like it was the right decision. The reason it was the right decision for her to come out is she cuts down Avery Patterson's angle. For here, I'd like Avery Patterson to cut across the goal and hit it with her right foot to the back post. That way, the path of the ball when it's being struck is working back onto the frame instead of out for a corner. Carolina has knocked on the door a couple of times, still hasn't broken through as they have their third corner coming. Played towards the back post. Lazzarini got a fist on it. Here's Meza. And a piece of Hansen. Carolina still with numbers in the box. Dorsey plays it to the top of the 18. Going to cross it in low. Pitt having some trouble clearing this one away. Meza with a shot from 20 yards out. Meza! Carolina goal. They've got the one nothing lead. Second goal of the season for Sam Meza, the junior out of Dallas, Texas. You said they need early goals, they got one. What an incredible effort to keep this alive. Sam Meza picks it up on the top of the box and does what she does best. He hits one to the back post and hits it low, just outside the reach of Lazzarini. Fantastic goal, Sam Meza. Carolina goal, 1-0. For the Tar Heels, the 30th goal scored this season. And it, it puts them in a position, Brianna. I saw a stat before this game that it blew my mind. Carolina, in the entire history of the program, has only lost 18 games when they have had a lead. 
All three losses this year, though, have been that way. They've had the lead. The other team has come back, so some hope for Pitt. But thinking about how long this program has been around, 44 years, just 18 times they've blown a lead and lost. I think historically Carolina has been really clear about the principles of closing out a game. We go into a more conservative formation, and the lines are more com compact from front to back and then also horizontally. So during my time there, I usually drop into the six, and having the double six provides more protection for your back line. Uh, but for this team this year, they just need to work on that piece and closing out the game, making sure they're taking less risk, keeping the ball out of their defensive third, and uh, making sure they establish possession and maintain it so that they don't let on any silly transitional goals. And how tough is that to really become a unit when you have to replace Macy Bell first, and then you have the freshman come in, and you have to replace her, and now you have so many pieces that are moving around and different players. There's Meza again. I think it's really challenging, but that's the reason they have so many players on the roster. Uh, they want to make sure that if anyone goes out of the, is out for the season, that they can replace them and still have a competitive team. And I, I still think they're in good hands. I think they've got a number of talented players who are going to fight to start and fight to, to step up for the group. And I think that's the resilience that Carolina has and has demonstrated over the course of you know, for their 44 year history. When we chatted with Anson Dortz at the beginning of the year, he told us this is the deepest team I've ever had. You can deal with injuries when you have a deep team. And when we spoke to him now before this game, you fast forward a month and a half, talking about those injuries and trying to figure out those pieces. It was something he said, you know, the, I told the girls after the loss to Virginia Tech, these are fixable issues that we're trying to deal with right now, not something that we can't find a solution to if they can fix those problems. He feels like they've got a good chance to be right back where they expect to be, and that's in the College Cup. And I think for them, after a result versus Virginia Tech, it lights a fire under them. They want to prove that they are a team to stay. They've gotten you know, one of the best compliments from Anson Dorans, who's the most decorated coach in the collegiate game, and I think they have to show up and prove that to him, that he they are the best they're the deepest team that he's had in his history, and I think they're perfectly capable of doing that, and it, it comes from the group who's going to step up and make sure that they refuse to lose. Colton coming across field for the Tar Heels here. Carolina continuing to dominate possession. I don't think we have seen Pitt get past the midline here of this one 15 minutes into it a team Bri Brianna who has scored 40 goals they gave up just their 10th this season to Meza a few minutes ago what do you do to change things to try and get that offense going I'd like to see Pitt play a little bit more direct I think Carolina has done a good job Looking for Murphy flicks that one on maybe a goal kick for the Panthers I think Carolina has done a good job keeping it compact throughout the midfield and and not allowing Pitt to establish their possession. So if they stretch them, like I said earlier, and get in behind and force Carolina to defend facing their own goal, it's going to open up some opportunities for them and create a little bit of space to play in. Looking for Shapansky near side. She's going to be whistled for the foul as Moxley goes down to the turf for the Tar Heels. One of three players on this Pitt team with at least five goals this season. Although Pitt dealing with injuries themselves, Amanda West, who has six goals, down with an injury, out for the season. So both teams facing some adversity on the injury front. But one of the things that we recognize about this team is that the Panthers have seen 13 different players find the back of the net this season. I think that's a testament to their will to step up and play for players who can't play this season. I'm sure Amanda West would kill to be out there, and um, it's unfortunate to see her have an injury this season because she's had an incredible career. And the goal scorer for the Tar Heels, whistled for a foul here deep in their own territory, and this will set Pitt up for a set piece, and you told me this is where they're most dangerous. One of the things I like that they do is they frame the goal and compete for second ball so if there's any like rebounds they're first to the ball and they usually redirect it on frame the 
Mountain Liner played into some traffic, found the foot of Ashton Gordon, put him come around on it, and it is going to be Carolina clearing things out. Emmy Allen, the starting goalkeeper for North Carolina. Red shirt freshman out of High Point, North Carolina. Some big shoes to fill. There have been some really good goalkeepers that have played for the Tar Heels throughout the years, but Hansen said that Claudia Dickey is one of the all-time greats, and that's who she's replacing. Looking to build for the first time. Ball played out into space. The Rose with a good read will now bring it up from the back line. Sentinel with some room. Tried to touch it ahead for Patterson. Too much pace on that, though. Really been a heck of a season for Avery Patterson for the Tar Heels. Seven goals, leads the way for them. That's third most in the ACC as well. Alongside Brianna Pinto, I'm Kyle Straub. Appreciate you joining us this evening here in Chapel Hill. Top 15 matchup as Pitt sits as one of just two undefeated teams still in ACC play. Florida State being the other one. Both of those with 12 points on the year. Carolina Brianna with just six points at two and two on the season. And with only six teams making the ACC tournament, really need to get some points out of this one as well as their game against NC State this weekend. Their, their sights are set on making sure they make the ACC tournament and then eventually postseason. And the ACC is difficult, but they've got to get the wins that they need, especially in games like tonight. That'll keep them above 500 and help them push to make that top six. Shapansky being hounded by Moxley, plays the ball through. That's going to go all the way back to Allen. Easy one for the redshirt freshman to scoop up. In playing to direct, I really do want to see Pitt do a better job getting Fury on the ball because I think she does a, a wonderful job making counter counter movement to create space for herself in behind. And if she gets linked up with Shapansky or Mertz, they could see some combination in the attacking third. Seeing here shortly some subs coming in for North Carolina, who is known to have line after line that they'll come in with. But Pitt may have one of the best subs in the entire country that they'll have come into the game. Got a whistle in behind that play. Highlighted her in the open Leah Pace. Seven goals on the season. Seems like the pressure of that front line by North Carolina has really made it difficult for Pitt to clear that ball, which has taken their ability to work it through the midfield. I, yeah, I'd agree with that. And I think for Pitt, one of the one of the challenges they're having is just the lack of movement off the ball uh, to support one, one another. And yes, Carolina's pressure is hard to get behind. But again, if you play in behind, play a little bit more direct. It stretches Carolina defensively, and then the spaces will open up in the midfield where uh, they can pl play probing passes from their center backs to their midfielders. But you need to open the space up before you play the short balls. Murphy got a piece of that one. She's still down in the middle of the field for Carolina as Pitt plays it up towards midfield. 
Whistle will come in from the referee. Murphy getting the start here today at attacking forward. Four goals this season for Murphy. One off of her pace from last year when she had five. Take another look at this one. Ashton Gordon does a little bit of a reckless job taking a t her first touch so that she can play the ball and she ends up tackling Emily Murphy pretty late. Emily Murphy tries to pick her off there and ends up getting the, the brunt of the tackle. Sophomore out of Windsor, England. Pitt trying to get that ball to Fury. Hanson able to get to it first, plays it back to Allen. This will be a throw in deep in Carolina territory here for the Panthers. Is it the goal scorer for the Tar Heels? Her second of the season. The difference so far. Pitt earning their first corner of this first half. Looks like Shapansky, the sophomore from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, will play this in. Leads the team six assists on the year. That one near the near post. It's going to be another corner for Pitt. I think that's more that's on the post that poked that one out of bounds for the Tar Heels. A little more air, this one further away from the goal mount, but headed away by Carolina. Chip back in by Bout. Carolina will clear this. Three-two in the shot chart in favor of Carolina. Feels like they've had more than three opportunities. I do think since the goal was scored, Brianna Pitt has settled into this game a little bit, though. They're looking more comfortable in possession, and they're cycling around the back to see if they can create overloads and wide spaces. Nice job by Dorsey to shield that one out. Earn a gold kick for her team. Here come the first subs for the Tar Heels. Dalene, the freshman out of Minnesota. Ali Gambone. Dalene will replace Murphy. She'll be up top, and Gambone going to slide right in where Libby Moore was in that defensive midfield. <laughs> no, Carolina didn't get tested very much defensively, but how do you think Libby Moore did in the starting role there in place of Maggie Pierce? I think she was, did everything she was tasked with doing. Uh, she did a great job covering the back four. She had a good work rate. She showed in build-up and was able to get the ball facing forward and continue Carolina's attack. Yeah, and sometimes for a sub, that's really all it is. Just do what you're asked for, not, not try and do anything extra. That's where you'll have your success. When your de defensive midfielders are simple on the ball and efficient, that's, that's when they're at their best, and I think Libby Moore did just that, and she had a good first off. Patterson plays this one into space. Sentinor back to the left foot. Couldn't get it through that back line defense for the Panthers. And Moxley across to Hanson now. Carolina showing some patience. <laughs> P 
Anderson will play it back to Gambone, and Carolina will try and spread things out and come near side. Meza to Dalin. She's going to be tripped up, and that's going to draw a flag. They're just going to give Carolina the corner that easily, I think, could have been a card and a free kick from where the foul was committed. Sam Meza plays a slip pass into Maddie Dalin, who get, tries to get on the end of it, but is tripped here by what looks to be Gordon. Nope. That is Anna Bout, Anna Bout, senior out of Ontario. No card, just a quick talking to, though, from the referee. Not going to get away with that one again once you've been spoken to. Has to be careful defensively, but she's looking to cover. And I think that's things that you need out of your midfielders, willing to track. Uh, just there being diligent about making the clean tackle. Setnor, top of the 18, has it blocked. Patterson turns, shot, and a save made by Lazzarini. just swipes that one away from the feet of Shapansky. While Carolina was on the attack, we had mentioned Pace, we talked about her in the open. She was brought on by Pittsburgh to try and help facilitate this offense. Pacing the pit offense, seven goals, all of them coming off the bench. And you see those top three goal scorers, a lot of different offensive threats for Pitt. They can come at you a lot of different ways. One of the interesting things is, for me, is that Pace has only started four games uh, prior to this game today. And if I were leading my team in goals and assists, I would want to start. So uh, I just think it's great that she's been a super sub, and um, I encourage her to continue the great work uh, because I think that shows just the commitment to the team and showing up and stepping on the field with energy. So credit to her. Darlene with the cross, nobody on the other end for the Tar Heels. So you're telling me Brianna in college was knocking on Anson's door saying, hey, coach, <laughs> I need to be in the starting 11 here. Uh, most definitely. <laughs> Gambone to Moxley. She's up from the back line trying to help this offense as it'll be played out of bounds. Still a 1-0 lead for North Carolina. That first goal, it came early in this first half thanks to Sam Meza, her second of the season, about 25 yards out, buried it in the right corner. There's Meza. Patterson. Going to work towards the middle of the box. Good defense, some help defense, but Meza there as well. Carolina working the top of the screen. Dorsey, typically an outside back, has moved into center back with the injuries. Plays a nice ball into the corner for Dalene. Good defense there. As Palomo will play it out of bounds. It'll be a throw in for the Tar Heels. Here come the line change though for Anson Dorrance. Four, five different subs for the Tar Heels. One blue jersey coming on for Pittsburgh. I know you were on the Carolina side when you were in college, but it's got to have a mental effect when you've been out there on the field as a defender for 40 minutes, 35 minutes, and it feels like you've had your back against your goal, and now all of a sudden there's five, six new fresh legs out there to come at you. Not only are they fresh legs, but they're hungry legs. Those legs are looking to come on the field and make an instant impact. And I think it's suffocating. It's hard to defend, but uh, for, for Pitt, they just need to stay true to their principles, continue doing what they're doing, defend as a unit, and uh, ultimately compete. with a nice turn on the ball. Cox has it knocked away, but that will be a corner, though, for the Tar Heels. And there's an example right away of 
hungry players coming off the bench. Izzy Cox has been in the starting lineup most of this season, replaced by Emily Murphy here today. She's going to want to find a way to get back into that starting 11 when she's got her opportunities. And the way to do it, to compete for minutes on this team, is to find ways to create and score goals. So I think that's what's going to be at the forefront of Isabel Cox's mind tonight. Ruta plays that one in. Ball chipped on. Hansen. Goal of Tar Heels. 2-0 Carolina. For Tori Hansen, her fourth goal of the season. One of Paige Valentino's best abilities is her ability to serve the ball and just make it at the right pace and flight so that you can get ahead on it. And Tori Hansen does an incredible job redirecting this back to the near post and heading it down so that it can ju get just under the bar. Wonderful effort from Carolina Tar Heels. It has so much of her defensively this year because of the injuries we've talked about. But the fact that she's been able to help out with four goals now on the offensive side of things just shows you how much of a player she is on both ends as Carolina looks for more. Tori Hansen is an absolute weapon on set pieces because she can judge the flight of the ball and she's not afraid to go up for a 50-50 ball and head it inside either, either box, her defensive box or, or her attacking box. And uh, those four goals are incredibly important for the Carolina Tar Heels this year. The assist for Tolentino, her first on the season. Pace thought she had that one taken away from Allen. Instead, the whistle comes in. It'll go back to the Tar Heels. One way to slow down a team that has scored 40 goals on the season and averages the second most per game in the NCAA. Don't let them have possession. That's exactly what Anson Dorrance's North Carolina Tar Heels have done so far here in the first half. They put a couple in the back of the net, Brianna, but I feel like they've just done a really good job of being smart with the ball and keeping possession to keep it away from Pitt. I think historically Carolina has showed their ability to possess throughout the midfield and today they've skipped the midfield just a little bit and I think that is perfectly okay. I think a lot of people are confused by the fact that pretty soccer isn't just tiki-taka playing, you know, five to ten yard balls and distributing it around the field all game long. It's whatever's the most direct way to score and maintain possession and I think they've done uh, just both of those in such a beautiful way. and. Uh, for the Tar Heels, they are looking to continue their efforts, especially as they have the new line step in, and uh, so far, so good. Cox to Sember. Defense will force her to play it back. I like how you called it the pretty game. I've also heard it called the beautiful game. To me, the ones that put the ball in the back of the net are the best ones. Are the best, yes. Uh, but I think different games ask different questions of each team, and you need a, a diverse ability in your attacking third and um, different ways of building out of the back. And if your team can flip a switch and say, hey, this might not be working today, let's go along, that's effective. And I think they've got the pace up top to create those runs in behind. Tina will take this corner kick. Some good work from Cox coming off the bench to earn this corner for the Tar Heels. And back post. Ball still loose, still loose. Cox got a hit on it. Somehow it didn't go past the end line and it's cleared out by the defense. Lazzarini giving props to her defense for helping her out. I just love the commitment to fight for it, the ball and to clear it off the line. Great defensive effort from Pitt. Della Peruta and Cox both thought they had themselves goals just to be denied. 
It's so hard in moments like those. Your eyes get so big and you're like, I'm, I'm here, I'm here, I'm ready to score. <laughs> and unfortunately, it gets denied by the valiant effort from Pitt Panthers. It's a settled shot from sail over the crossbar, though. Take another look at this one. How many chances did Carolina have? Cox battling with the keeper just off of the defender, Yapel, who was there to help. Still not out. And again, it's Lazzarini poking it away. Eyes big on both the offense and defensive side there. I feel like that's a goal that if you're pit, you just can't let go in the back of the net. Hard collision between Hansen and Pace. Referee immediately calling for the training staff. I think he thinks Pace got hit in the head. She's arguing that she didn't and does not want to have to go off, but will have to be checked out and evaluated before entering back into play. Can understand the frustration from Pace in that situation, but live speed, seeing how violent it looked, I'm going to go with the referee makes the right call there, erring on the side of caution. Yeah, I think you should definitely err on the side of caution because it looked like Pace was a little bit blindsided in that collision. and. You want to protect the players because that's the responsibility of the referee at the end of the day, to facilitate the game and to protect the players. Hit looking to break through offensively. Just two shots so far in the game, only one of them on goal. He's been all North Carolina this evening. Tino out wide, Dalene. <laughs> Dalene with a burst of speed. She'll put on the brakes now. Welcome back, Talia Della Pruta. What an incredible effort to hit it with her laces into the top corner. What we like to call it top bends. Just the, the direction, the accuracy, and the power that she struck it with. She finished it with conviction. Della Rose with her first goal of the season. Third of the half for the North Carolina Tar Heels. I don't know that internally there were question marks, but externally coming off of their third loss of the season on the road against Virginia Tech most recently, the question was how were the Tar Heels going to respond as Pitt looking to get a goal pace just a little bit far on that cross. I think you can throw all those questions about how they're going to respond out the window, though. Carolina has responded in very strongly with a three-goal first half. Those results earlier in the season lit a fire under them, and they've got something to prove, and I think they're out here fighting to keep their season alive and make sure that they continue to compete to make the ACC tournament. Carolina in a four-way tie right now for sixth place with six points in conference play, sitting at two and two. Top six teams make the ACC tournament at the end of the year. One of those teams they are tied with, Notre Dame, having a tiebreaker against them. You want to get as many points in hand while you still can. It's coming off of a season where Carolina missed the ACC tournament for the first time ever.
Cox giving chase, forces Gordon to play that one out of bounds. Dorsey up in the back line, throws it into Cox. Trying to get it back to Dorsey. Side flag up. Just once this year, Carolina has scored more than three goals in a game. It was a 6-0 win at Baylor earlier this year. to play this one back to Allen Pitt. Putting some pressure on Carolina. Amber's battling with Dorsey. Evers will just chip that one towards the goal. One hopper into the arms of Allen. Four out of Oakdale, Pennsylvania. Fifth ACC game this year for the Tar Heels. Third time they've scored three goals. Bearing down on that one. Going to earn another corner here for the Tar Heels. Corner going to be the eighth of the half for the Tar Heels. Played into space, Tolentino gonna take a shot just over the crossbar. Not a bad thought there though from Tolentino. I think that was a great decision to go short and utilize Paige Tolentino's serving ability, but for Pitt, you gotta pay attention uh, to when they are quick on set pieces and make sure you get someone out there to put pressure on the ball. Paige Tolentino serves it over the bar, but it was a really dangerous opportunity for the Tar Heels. an opportunity for Pitt. Evers taken down in the box by Dorsey. Having a Julia Dorsey, a senior, who can fill in that center back role, one of the reasons I think Anson was not in panic mode when talking about giving up goals. Julia Dorsey is demonstrating her tenacity and her experience that she has. She's going to close down any opportunity for a shot here and clear the ball to see. Carolina going to clear that out without giving up a shot. Dalene with a lot of space in front of her. Davidson on defense. From distance, shot. Saved, but it's loose, and it'll be played out of bounds by Zaliski. Bella Simber, the sophomore, taking the shot from distance as Lazzarini comes up with the save for fifth of this first half. Bella Sember should look to find it on top of the ball more, be, on top of the box more, because she also has an incredible ability to strike the ball. She hits it with pace and power and accuracy, and uh, just how quickly she gets a shot off is also what makes her a difference maker. So she should look for that more often. Nice run from Dorsey. That touch got a little bit away from her, though.
trying to send it to the far side of the field. Pace plays it near side. Evers going to take the shot from about 20 yards out. Doesn't get much on it. And Allen able to cover it up. Again, we just saw we saw Leah Pace creating something out of nothing, looking to switch the field so that her her teammate in Evers could get in behind. For me, I'd love to see her take a driving touch in behind, cut across the frame of the goal, and then have her pick to, to go near or to the near post or to the far post. Under 30 to go here in the first half. A dominating first half from the Tar Heels. And they're going to have one more opportunity here. Could have set something up, but they got the quick restart, though. Carolina came out with fire in their eyes, and they look to compete and get goals early. And now this is step two of their objective for the game, to head into the second half and close it out. For the Pitt Panthers, they've had a couple opportunities, and they need to look to get their forwards on the ball, specifically Leah Pace, because she's the one creating opportunities for them in the attacking third. 13 shots in the first half for the North Carolina Tar Heels. They limited Pitt to an evening here in Chapel Hill as North Carolina has the 3-0 lead over Pittsburgh, 45 minutes into this one. Alongside Brianna Pinto, I'm Kyle Straub. Appreciate you joining us here in Chapel Hill. A dominating first 45 minutes for North Carolina and an answer that Anson Dorrance, I'm sure, was really hoping to see tonight. Their ability to strike their strike the ball from outside the box has been impressive tonight for the Tar Heels. Uh, also, Tori Hansen's goal, the just ability to get up and redirect the ball on frame has been impressive. And then for Pitt Panthers, stepping up and making sure they get their attackers involved in the play is going to be the key difference in the second half. It didn't take long for North Carolina to get on the board. 13 minutes in, actually, and Sam Meza found the back of the net. Just her ability to pick this up and then strike, do what she does best, to strike the ball into the bottom right corner, just outside the reach of Lazzarini. You have mentioned it already. Tori Hansen with a goal as well for the Tar Heels, her fourth on the season off this header. Tori Hansen is a warrior in the air. Her ability to judge the flight of the ball and redirect it where it needs to go has been a key figure in why she scored four goals this season. Paige Tolentino as well as Talia Della Peruta picking up assists on that one. Della Peruta not done though. She said, let me get an unassisted goal. The third of the half for the Tar Heels. Exciting moment for Della Peruta. She's welcoming back into the system and has proved what makes her a special player. Top bins goal for Della Peruta tonight. The stats tell the story of what we saw with our eyes. It was Carolina having possession, maintaining possession, and really having the better of the play. Carolina had a convincing lead so far in the game, and it shows the fire that they had coming off of the last result versus Virginia Tech. When we chatted with Anson coming into this one, he said, we've got to find a way to put teams away. And when we were chatting before this came on air, you had said something to me to the effect that teams need to learn how to win what what do you do to learn how to win those games not only does it come from experience but i think you've got a number of talented players who have played in those big games and know what it takes to shut out an opponent after you've gained a lead uh, but for me it's the attitude and the mentality that you're going to refuse to lose on your home field and i think this can be a huge growth step that carolina can build on tonight uh, just maintain, maintaining the ability to attack throughout the remainder of the second half, but then as the game dwindles down, making sure you're taking less risk and that you remain compact, both horizontally and vertically. One of the things that Anson had said was, you know, in the past when we have had a lead that as a team, North Carolina, I don't want to say would pack in, but they would play a little bit more conservative. And he, he mentioned you specifically as being one of those pieces that he could rely on to drop back and be more of a defensive presence to help slow the offensive attack up, but if needed, still push that ball forward. With Pierce being out because of the red card last game, how does North Carolina handle that? Do they have the players in place to be able to make that happen here in this game? I definitely think Carolina has the players in place to make it happen. Libby Moore has one of the most impressive 
defensive work rates on the, on the team, and she's able to shift across the floor. Uh, if the result changes and in Pitt scores a couple goals, maybe they'll look to drop in another defensive midfielder, which is historically what we've done as a, during my time as a Tar Heel. Uh, but for Carolina, they just need to keep doing what they're doing, maintain possession, uh, keep it out of their defensive third, and they'll be good to go. The three goals that Pitt allowed in this first half. Nice run on the back post there from Dahleen, who didn't start the first half, but had an impact and out there for Anson. Ball chipped on again by the Tar Heels. Not letting me get my thought out, which is three goals matches the most that Pitt has given up in a game. It happened in their lone loss so far this season, falling 3-2 to VCU. So look at Ben Waldrum, the interim head coach. First game for him in that position as his father, Randy Waldrum, the head coach for Pitt, is currently at the helm of the Nigerian national team. Here comes Murphy. Tried to go bottom of the screen near post and just pushed it a little bit wide. Excuse me, that's Della Rose. Good effort to get on the end of this by Della Rose and hit a shot first time. The amount of time she had to get a shot off is far and few between because Lazarina does a good job closing that angle and making her forced into a decision. Freshman out of Grindstone, Pennsylvania. Tar Heels pushing numbers forward again. Colton plays it wide for Meza. Dahlin trying to get a step, but a nice job on the tackle there by Palomo. He'll stay with the heels. Top 15 matchup in the rankings. Top five when you look at the RPI. Carolina, who last week was number two in the RPI, suffered the loss to Virginia uh, Tech, has fallen to fifth. Pitt with the win most recently. He has moved up to number two overall in that RPI. There's Patterson. Three blue jerseys in front of her, looking for some space. Chips it on just over the crossbar. Looks like it's going to be a Carolina corner kick, though. I really like the level of composure Avery Patterson has here. She takes a couple deft touches to create a space for a shot. Here she just gets under it and it sails over the bar, but it's a good effort to stay composed, look for an opportunity to get a shot off. Trying to find somebody open top of the box. Good defense from Pitt to clear it back towards midfield. Pushing the back is going to give possession back to the heels, though. Nine fouls in that first half. Five from Pitt, four from Carolina, and neither side got a card. on the top of the screen from Carolina. Ball into space from uh, Dahlin. Battling over in the corner with Paloma. Dahlin got a piece of it, stays in bounds, but it'll go out on the far sideline. Just got an update from our producer that 2-3 matchup, Virginia and Florida State just getting underway. Florida State already with the 1-0 lead. Seminoles as well as Pitt, the only two teams left undefeated in ACC play. They sit atop the standings with 12 points apiece. Crowd here at 
Dorrance Field getting into this one as they see a 3-0 lead for their home team. See the bucket hat on one of the players there in the background. It's actually a giveaway here. I saw a line of, had to have been 200 students waiting to get in. You give something free away and everybody will come. Pretty nifty hats. Uh, it's the best part about being in college is all the free apparel you come away with after four years. I mean, not only do you get to come to this gorgeous stadium that they just put up a couple of years ago, but then, yeah, you get some free swag, especially as a college kid where you don't have the ability to go buy yourself some clothes. Tar Heels really showing some patience here, and they've got the ability to do that with that 3 nothing lead. At what point does Pitt maybe take some chances, put some pressure on to try and force Carolina's hand? At this current scoreline, they don't have much to lose, so play direct, get in behind, take risk, because they've, they're capable of scoring goals, and I think their their record with 40 goals on the season, uh, pushing to meet that 41 program uh, history record, like. For them, they want to keep pushing for goals because they have the players to do it. Uh, they've shown the ability to do it throughout the season, and they're just really great in the attack when they give themselves a the chance. 40 goals, as Brianna said, second most in program history. 41 is the record for Pitt. They set that last year. Here's Patterson, chips this one, back post, headed back towards Colton. Defender got a piece of that one. I think it was Zelski, who knocked it away. Emily Colton making her 31st straight start for the Heels, almost got their fourth goal. The Tar Heels will look at, to lift it to the back post, redirect it across frame for any of their trailing runners. Colton is unable to connect with it on that attempt, but it was a good effort from the Tar Heels. trying to chip that over the top of the car, uh, Tar Heel defense. And it'll just head out of bounds off the foot of Schepanski. Five goals, six assists for the sophomore this season. Tariel's looking to stay perfect against Pittsburgh. Seventh all-time meeting between these two programs. 6-0 record for Carolina. Most recently a 1-0 win at Pitt last year. Almost a year to the day. October 7th they won that game up in Pittsburgh. Two thousand eighteen, the last time they met here in Chapel Hill. This stadium wasn't here. It was the same field. It was Fetzer Field, but a very different look with everything around it prior to Dorrance Field being finished. You had the opportunity to play on both of those fields, did you not? Yeah, I thought it was special, uh, especially in the twenty eighteen season. Uh, we played at Wake Med, which was the uh, hosting venue of the College Cup. So we got to set our sights on going to the College Cup from early in the season, and we got to see it every Playing day. At, quote unquote, at home. For Playing the at Cup. home all season <laughs> long. So uh, it was a nice change of pace for, for the Carolina Tar Heels program. Uh, but there's nothing better than playing here on Doran's Field. Ironic that that field where the College Cup was held, where you played that season, where the College Cup will be this year became your professional home field as well, now as a member of the North Carolina Courage. It's full circle, and I even played youth games on the field just across the street on field eight and field four and five. So uh, it's so cool to, to have memories at every phase of my career thus far at Wake Med Soccer Park. That is pretty neat. And when I talked to Anson about this field being built and constructed and his name being put on it, he kept on telling this story about how he was in one of the dorm rooms that overlooked the field and he would play games down on here when he was in school at UNC and how he literally has left his blood on the field. So it's only right that eventually his name is out there. So, I mean, I guess eventually if you keep on going, maybe we'll have Pinto Field over at Wake Med. One could only hope. <laughs> 
First sub of the second half coming in for the Tar Heels as Gambone will come in to replace Moore. Those two have combined to play a pretty solid game there in defensive midfield, replacing Maggie Pierce, who got a red card against Virginia Tech, forced to sit out this game because of that. up top, starting to put a little pressure on Carolina. Tar Heels do a good job of using the short passes that you talked about in the first half that they really didn't have to. They were able to kind of skip the midfield and play it over top, but taking advantage of that possession here to just eat away at the clock, it seems like. And that's the key difference, making sure that you establish that possession, keep the ball, because ultimately the opposition will have to chase it. And that takes time off the clock like you just mentioned. Good adjustment from the Tar Heels here in the second half. Because of the way they lost those three games they have this season, and Anson said we dominated all three of those games that we lost, I've got to imagine that that was all that was talked about in the locker room was finishing this off, not allowing the mistakes of past games to be the mistake again here tonight. You always want to grow from your mistakes, and over the course of a long season, there's a lot of lessons to be learned, and I think the Tar Heels are applying what they've learned last week, and it's been a great adjustment from the team overall. The freshman Fleming Dean out of Marietta, Georgia, committing the foul, giving the Tar Heels a great spot here for a free kick. Patterson working on the near side. Looks like it'll be a senior Emily Moxley for the Tar Heels to take the free kick. Shoots it towards the back post, looking for the header. Found Patterson, just couldn't get it on frame. It'll be a goal kick. Tar Heels on the season, averaging over 18 and a half shots per game. Holding opponents to just under seven. And this one shaping up to be right on pace with that. So far, 17 shots for the Tar Heels, just four for this pit offense. Beautiful ball through, Darlene with a touch. Darlene, 1v1, Darlene, goal! Four nothing Tar Heels! What a perfectly weighted ball from Emily Colton into Maddie Darlene, who takes the convincing touch in behind, shows her speed, and has a great finish into the side paneling. I think this is her first career goal. The true freshman with her first goal of her career had an assist on the season. You can see the joy on her face. You'll always remember your first goal in your collegiate career. Thirteen different goal scorers this season now for the North Carolina Tar Heels. Emily Colton credited with the assist on that beautiful ball through the defense. With the 13 different goal scorers, they actually match Pitt. Uh, they also have 13 different goal scorers for their, this season. Kind of wild to think about that is the case for both teams, yet you have such dominance from one versus the other in this game tonight. It 
14, correct. Not 13 yeah, so because of Della Peruta. That was her first goal this season. So they matched and they exceeded. And you can, you can forget about it sometimes because there's two Della Perutas on the team, Tori and Talia. Tori has some goals already. Talia hit not. Here the Tar Heels have made a number of changes in their back line to give some other players some minutes as they have quite a big lead today. And something that, that Anson had said was with two matches this week, Thursday and then a quick turnaround to Sunday, he's going to have to manage some minutes for players. So I'm sure he's happy having the big lead to be able to take some minutes off some of those legs. Emerson Elgin enters the match at left back position. Redshirt freshman out of Franklin Lakes, New Jersey. Paige Tolentino slides into the center back position alongside Abby Allen. Lauren Wrigley, a sophomore out there in the midfield. Ruta with a nice ball ahead for Cox. Izzy will slow things up, tried to find Murphy. She just couldn't get free for that final touch. Tar Heels hoping for a corner, not going to get it from the referee though. It'll be a goal kick for the Panthers. Four goals scored by the Tar Heels tonight, the most given up by Pittsburgh this season. Pick coming into this one, 11-1 on the year, 4-0 in ACC play. Best start in program history. Tonight was the start of the toughest stretch they have on their schedule, though. Back-to-back -back ranked opponents with the Tar Heels and then Duke later this weekend. It's also the first of three straight on the road for Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh shouldn't let tonight shake them because they have had a great start to their season, so they should rest and recover. Oh. That was in the box. It's going to be a PK. Schapansky had a step on the edge, taken down in the box. We're going to get Moxley on this one. This is a great example of testing the back line. Schapansky gets on the dribble and cuts inside, cuts off Emily Moxley and draws the penalty kick. Yellow card to Moxley as well. This attempt at goal will match program history and number of goals. Do you agree with the card there? Definitely a foul, but do you think it's a card? I do think it's a card because she's in on goal otherwise. Ashton Gordon going to take the PK. She's got the captain armband on. One goal, three assists on the year for the senior out of Tulsa. Near side, Allen gets the save. Gambone there to help clear it out for the Tar Heels. Everything going right for Carolina, including when the keeper has to guess on the PK. What a big stop for Emmy Allen. This is a huge moment for her as a goalkeeper to keep it out of the net, to continue to have a shutout for today. And it's, I think it's a step in the right direction after her last game. I think she's a lot, got a lot to be proud of after tonight. Anson told us with a young player like Allen in goal, you see her make some incredible, unbelievable saves, but there's those moments of a young player, the inexperience and the decision-making that you have to live with as they grow on the field instead of in practice. But having moments like that have got to build the confidence and help those. Confidence is everything as a goalkeeper because you have to believe that you're going to get to every ball and keep it out of the back of your net. And she's do doing a great job tending her line tonight. Four saves on the night for Allen. Even though Pitt only has five shots in the game, four of them have been on goal for the Panthers. Allen has started every game this season for the Tar Heels, has allowed just six goals. 
27 saves now on the year. Ball played to the near side for Mertz. Elgin, the redshirt freshman, will throw it in for the Tar Heels. Under 25 to go here in Chapel Hill. Four different goal scorers for Carolina. Cox showing the speed. Able to get a step on Zaliski. Cox with the right foot. Gordon able to get in front though. Six goals, four assists for the senior on the season. Sweet. Della Peruta. Gambone has it taken away. Pace looking for some room. Playing this one over the top of everybody out of bounds back to the Tar Heels. Rachel Jones going to come on for the Tar Heels, the grad senior. So often you see grad next to a player's name, and because of the transfer portal now, you just immediately think grad transfer, but for Rachel Jones, a grad player, using that extra season, staying at Carolina. She's doing it all. She not only ha has had a great career so far as a Tar Heel, but now she's pursuing her, her law degree. And um, I, just the fact that she can stay here at, for undergrad and for grad school is just a testament to her, her love for Chapel Hill. The fact that you can be on the soccer team, devote all of that time, and be in law school, just tells you how good of a person she is with managing her time and making sure she gets her work done. She's resilient, she's organized, she's composed, and she's a leader on the team. Oh, side flag up. I think they got Cox. Fourth time Carolina has been caught offside here tonight. over into the corner. Four white jerseys there, but she's going to earn a corner kick. Played off of Tolentino in the near side corner. Good work from Mertz, the senior. For Pitt, dangerous one, cleared out off the end line. Jones got a piece of it. And then gonna draw the foul. Ten on ten crime. The April taking her down just outside of the Carolina blocks. Quick turnaround for both of these teams, as we mentioned. Back in action on Sunday for North Carolina. NC State will be in town for Pitt. They stay in town, don't have to really travel, but 
tough test with the Duke Blue Devils on their schedule. Mars Josephson gonna check in for the Tar Heels as Allen gets a good hand from the hometown crowd. Wasn't tested a lot, but made the four saves she needed to, including that big one on the PK. Eighth game this season that Josephson has appeared in for the Tar Heels. Just three goals allowed, 12 saves on the season for her. Here's Jones. Shot, was that one deflected? Just went wide. Wasn't sure with the flight of that ball if it had gotten deflected. It just had some spin on it going away from the goal mouth and it is a goal kick for Pitt. Here's Sydney Chessman, freshman out of Lafayette, Colorado. Be more back into the game for the heels. Frustrating night for the pit offense and Leah Pace. Trying to get Mertz open on this near side, not able to. Four goals for North Carolina is the reason they've got this lead. It's four different goal scorers, Brianna, with Meza starting things off in just the 12th minute of this game. It was her second goal of the season. And because they've got four different goal scorers, you got to think that it's the, the double win. Not only do you have the defensive game that you're looking for that you hadn't had here in a couple of losses but you also have that offensive ability to fire from a couple of different directions and leave teams not really knowing who to focus on. It's that collective buy-in buy to refuse to lose to take it to teams and to attack with vengeance and uh, we've seen that with four different goal scorers and Carolina can walk away from today knowing that they've got people who are going to step up in the big moments. Clear there from the Tar Heels, Elgin. Pitt continuing to press. Got to imagine that if Pitt can find the back of the net, just find something to feel good about coming out of this game. Here's Cox back the other way on a counterattack. Jones coming back, but numbers for the defense as they're able to take it away. DLC does, does a great job delaying there. Forcing Cox to her right into no options, and she's able to pick it off and secure possession for her team. Mertz looking for some options. We'll head back towards the middle of the field. Moore giving chase. Lomo plays it wide. Nice defense there as Chessman's able to take it away. Take a look at those four goals for North Carolina going back to the first half with Sam Meza getting her second of the season. 
Sam Mesa again, she strikes it so well. Tori Hansen does what she does best, competes from the air. Talia Del Tafaruta strikes the ball so well into top bins. And Maddie Dahleen finishes it up with a great finish for her first collegiate goal. Two first goals of the season for the Tar Heels from Dahleen and De La Puerta. Three coming in the first half, one here in the second for Carolina. So there from Elgin, just couldn't get through it in time to keep it in bounds. Goes back to Pitt, under 15 remaining here in this one. Third time in program history for Pitt that as a ranked team, they have played a ranked opponent. Unless there is a historic comeback here. They will fall to 0-3 in those games. <laughs> Panthers played TCU last season. Horn Frog ranked sixth at the time, won one nothing. And then back in 2020, Panthers were ranked 14th played 10th ranked Virginia, suffered a 2-1 overtime loss. He's prodding at the top of the screen. to Jones. You can see at this point, Carolina not really looking to move the ball forward with much urgency, just trying to pass to the open player into open space. I think that's a smart tactic as they've been able to keep the ball for the vast majority of the second half. There's a stark difference between this game and their game versus Virginia Tech, where the play was a little bit more open. There was a lot of transition. It's hard to compete for Carolina, but today they've made the proper adjustments to make sure that they secure their lead. Moore has that one poked away from behind. Pitt will look for a counterattack. Even when the Panthers have won a ball in the midfield and look to get an offensive attack going, it seems like Carolina immediately just swarms to the ball and just doesn't even allow the first touch to start anything. They're kind of killing their hopes, but there have been a couple moments, like we saw when they drew the, the penalty kick, that Pitt is able to get in behind and create some opportunity for themselves, and they should look to play more direct, especially as we head into the last 11 minutes. Four saves in the game for Emmy Allen. on the season. Fifth hardest schedule in the nation. And 
Gretzky said, when we play out of conference early in the season, we want to challenge ourselves so that when we are in ACC play, we're not going to see anything that we're not able to handle. And they went on the road out west, picked up some big wins. They've seen some adversity, but also the ability to jump back and rebound from it like tonight coming off the loss. Playing a tough schedule not only helps you identify where your weaknesses are, but it helps you grow. And for RPI, that's good heading into postseason because, like you said, you're, you're playing against these tough teams, building confidence when you get res big results. And you're able to build off those results heading into ACC play where you're playing tough matchups multiple times a week. Ten minutes away from their tenth win of the season. Dorrance going to get some subs back into this game. Dan Bone, Sember, and Colton. Excuse me, that's Murphy. Or thought she was going off. Turns back around and heads onto the pitch. Sorreo on the throw in. The freshman has it knocked out of bounds and gives it right back to the Tar Heels, who will make another sub. Here comes Sarah Bayer. Grad transfer out of Loyola. take this corner for Pitt. Maybe not, a little hesitation. She'll head into the box. As you'd expect, Panthers with all of the numbers forward. Ellie Breach, who is in goal all the way up to midfield. That one is going to be punched. It's either by Josephson or Chessman, the defender, got a head on it. Either way, another corner kick here for Pitt. Palomo plays it in with the left foot. Ball loose. Cleared up towards midfield. Five corners in the game for Pitt. They really haven't threatened off of those set pieces that they're so dangerous on normal. They certainly made it difficult. UNC's had to defend standing on top of their, their goal line and they've done a good job clearing it out of danger. But historically, Pitt has done a great job like keeping the ball alive when it's inside the six or the 18 yard box so that they can redirect it on frame. That's how they've created a lot of the goals that they've scored this season. Gordon trying to play that ball through. Murphy got in the way of it. Carolina has possession, under seven minutes remaining. Looking for Murphy. attack building shot off the left foot and a little bit wide from Bayer this is the first minutes for Bayer what an exciting moment to make her debut for the Carolina Tar Heels 
Originally out of Merrick, New York, played at Loyola, Maryland prior to joining the Tar Heels as a grad transfer. The whistle referee says play on. Sember building. Murphy trying to play a little give and go with her. It's knocked away though. Pitt has a player down back near midfield. Kira Mellenhorse. Grabbing at the left shoulder. Take a look at this replay. Gambone going in. Looks like she fell on the ball. with Bayer flanking her on the left. Jones on the right, Murphy working towards the middle of the field. Too many blue jerseys, nearly take it away. Murphy gonna take a shot and it will just go wide, dribbling across the goal and out of bounds. Four goals, three assists on the season for Murphy who got the start today for Carolina. Freshman Dean back in for Pitt. <laughs> Whistle as Abby Allen is called for the push. to Jones. Gambone going to play it wide. Gambone has it taken away by a pair of Panthers. Murphy. Deflected and just going to go wide there. Corner kick coming for North Carolina. Macy Teeter, the freshman out of St. Louis with that shot. Great effort from Emily Murphy to have the hold up play, slip it in behind for a first time shot from Macy Teeter. It's deflected and it looks initially like it was going to go on for him, but it just earns a corner kick. Carolina came into this game with six points in the ACC, two and two record in conference play. That was good to tie them with three other teams for sixth place. One of those teams that they were tied with coming into tonight, NC State, is who their next opponent will be on Sunday, right back here in Chapel Hill. And it'll be Brianna and I on the call for that one Sunday afternoon in a game in which we know North Carolina will now have nine points looking to possibly double up their total in just a couple of days span. In-state rivalry will be a fun matchup. When you were a member of the team, was it more of the Duke matchup, the state matchup? Was it somebody else? Where does it fall on the, the soccer side? It's the blue blood rivalry. It's Duke and Carolina. That's the fun matchup because it follows the school's history of just being eight miles apart. Special to compete who, for who was the better blue. And in my defense, I'd argue that it was the light blue. Well, <laughs> if you go by results this year, you are correct. Carolina with the three nothing win earlier this year over Duke. Game at 
non-conference game. And you got to love that with the amount of teams that the ACC now has that if it works out a year where you're not playing them on the schedule, make sure you play that rivalry and get it on there, even if it's a non-con. Well, locally, that, those games draw thousands of fans, and they're usually sellouts in both stadiums. And I think that's just great for the collegiate soccer space because you want to continue to grow the game. You want to put these players on the biggest platform they can play in front of. And those are games that they'll mem remember for the rest of their career. Trying to keep it in just out of her reach, though. Dominating win here for North Carolina on a Thursday night over what was an undefeated Pittsburgh team. Starting first with Pitt, Brianna, what do you do to recover, get refocused for Sunday when you have that matchup against Duke? This wasn't the result they were looking for tonight, but I think they need to rest, recover, and get focused on their next game. They've got a tough matchup against Duke to another game on the road, so they've just got to prioritize coming here to get at least three points. North Carolina gets the 4 nothing win. They find a way to close it out, as Anson Doran said. What was the most impressive part of this win for you? Just the fantastic response after coming from a loss at Virginia Tech, the way they possessed the ball in the second half and really suffocated Pitt's defense uh, was really impressive. So I, I think that Carolina has a lot to be proud of, and this is something they can build on heading into their next match.